Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, Long War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're playing Legendary Iron Man Difficulty. It's month number 7, we're still fighting the aliens on both of the American continents. Today we're looking into a relatively easy mission, Operation Moonbreaker, where we're trying to get our 8th scientist. And we got a pretty full-fledged team. Uh, 7... Um, overall, gunner specialist, assault shinobi technician, sharpshooter, and on top of it we got our tertium spark, which is the yellow one, the one that's focusing on damage and uh, hitting a lot of shots accurately. Yeah, we over-infiltrated it, nine enemies, really nothing more to say, it should be an easy mission to be honest. And we landed. Secure the VIP and proceed to the evac volume for extraction. Moderate distance to get out of here, plus we got 21 turns. All right, well, that's a lot. And we got the VIP just right with us, which means we're going to use our um, Shinobi to scout. Doors here are open, which is not necessarily a good sign. Closing on target position now. There is the first pack. Moving, to designated Moving a bit closer. And I'm wondering if this here would trigger them already. Probably not. No. Just barely out of range to trigger them. Let's move everyone into a decent position. <clears throat> I, I guess that'll be okay. Our scientist just hunkers down. Tired of waiting around. And last but certainly not least, I'm going. our specialist. We still got run and gun in case we need to get any closer. I mean, technically we can position ourselves here, it doesn't matter. The shotgun shot is not going to hit. Uh, not on the, uh, during this, on this distance. And we find ourselves a chosen. It seems to be the hunter, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Chance to fire on melee uh, on missed shots uh, gets an increased defense uh, once you take a shot at him. Immune to explosions takes extra damage from reapers and is immune to melee damage. Fair enough. I appreciate that. That makes the mission a bit more difficult, but he only has 35 hit points, so we should be fine. Just need to shred his armor. There we go. That immediately shredded his armor. Some extra damage. Come on. Oh, dang it. Almost killed the mutant right away. Good. So, we can kill it and get death from above. Very nice. Let's holo target the Viper. Time for us to run and gun. That's 100% chance to hit it, but I want to re retain the option to theoretically stun it as well. We could take a hack, which is great. I absolutely like it that the mechs can do that. 
You know what? Let's get uh, the extra crit chance. Perfect. Decrypting security protocols. Might as well take the shot 50 50. Oh, pretty decent damage. Lunchbox smooths over. Still, I'll abuse the high ground here. Another 50 50. That unfortunately missed. Oh, I remember. Probably could have used the roast a bit earlier. That way it needs to uh, change its position. We're immune to fire, so there is no point, uh, there is no risk. What? Oh, although we're immune, we needed to change our position. Well, that was... That was an all-around bad play. Because what I've done is I essentially also moved it away from, from our assault. Yeah. New ability. I certainly did not use uh, that as well as I could. And since we're now discovered anyways... Might as well hand over the command ability. And do the following. There we go. It's burning so it will die next turn. Yeah, the roast, I should have done that before taking shots even. Not a very clever move. It's a good ability, but I've completely misused it. It gives you the option to get them out of cover. But we got another chance here to prove that the ability is good. There's the tracking shot. Moving out of range of the tracking shot. So we only have one uh, charge on the roast ability, but I'll make sure that I use it correctly the next time. Fortunately, used our run and gun with a very limited effect. I can handle that. It's interesting, by the way, how fire even gets rid of undestroyable cover. I've never seen those platforms here being destroyed. Like not even in the normal XCOM game. Moving down here. Yeah. 
Nope, that's just a too low chance to hit. We're instead continuing to move. Overdrive. This guy here seems to be hidden due to the break in the wall. This does no longer count as cover. Hence, you can't really flank him very well. Because this here is also full cover. Okay, apparently this here is supposed to be a position where one can hit him. But again, the chances are really bad. When set going for the priest. Setting our weapon. We're double moving. If you say so. I would give an aid protocol to our Shinobi. And this here should be at least fine to start injuring him. He'll move away. And by moving away, we can overwatch. Um, no, we're just going to move in. Like I said, unfortunately, the run gun is already gone. Good, easy enough. Good, we just need to get out of his tracking short range. Unfortunately, that means we can't melee the soldier, but that's fine. Seems doable. Moving up. <laughs> of course, we're missing. Oh, you know what we could do? How oh, about first taking a slash? And then moving out. Yet? I suppose that's why the elders want you back on the tactical side, Commander. Good, we can get up here and just leave the battlefield. Just a moment. Moving a bit closer. Yeah, and as for our sniper, I think we have plenty of time left. Yeah, but we still should try to get on top of the roof. It's not the perfect position. Let's hope we're not getting caught out in transition. I really don't like when the sniper is kind of at the front line. Killed four enemies, and we know that there are seven to nine. So this makes it seven. Not a hundred percent sure why exactly they triggered immediately. Engaged. 
But this here is going to make for some good mech on mech combat. Are you kidding me? Alright, of course it's 9 instead of 7, right? Alright, let's get the mech down. Fortunately, we missed. Let's first get rid of their cover and their armor. That worked well. So far, so good. Uh, let's take a full cover position over here. I'll keep his action for a potential overwatch. Time for an aid protocol, followed by a potential shutdown. Uh, we can't even shut it down. Dang it. I really don't like where this is going. I mean, we could kill or try to hit the shock, shock trooper, it's not going to be a kill. The problem is the mech can go in and just take an attack. I guess... Uh, this here is one of the best positions that we could get. No problem, Bob. Still in full cover. Let's try to kill him. Very nice. That worked like a charm. Well, how about that? Suppressing the heavy grenadier to prevent any grenades from coming in. I mean, we could go up to here. I definitely also like the idea of just straight up going in, but that's unfortunately too risky. So if we were to be standing here, he could go up to here and take shots into half cover. We don't want that to happen. Could potentially move to here and just take shots, but the weapon is really bad. Twenty-seven hit points. It's just a lot. Moving back, and we're overwatching. It's not a great turn, not at all. But the point is. If we had done anything else, we would have left ourselves open. Good. He's going to join the battle soon. I'm not nearly as easy to beat as my siblings are. 
so don't get any funny ideas. What, did he use tracking shot or did he just move? Well, apparently tracking shot is still going. Good. The mech moves forward. Free reload. We shredded the other mech. Oh, we're one f tile short. Well, that's unfortunate. Let's deal with this flank here first. Could run and gun and kill the mech. Be charging in, but that does not deal enough damage. So instead, let's take the high ground. To maximize our chances of hitting the grenadier. Unfortunately, missed. Still dealing with him. Too far away for the flamethrower. Don't want to use run and gun, so... This is probably the best thing that I could do. Given that I don't know whether or not we can kill it with one shot. Alright, come on. Very nice. Good job. Flank secured. Now, we're still not fast enough to go there, but what we could do is we could Oscar Mike. Improving our movement speed. And that would allow us to reach the mech and potentially kill it. And since the damage scales with the distance uh, that we've moved, it deals a lot of damage. Classical X confession. He was just hitting through the door. We got two more advents plus the chosen, and that's about it. Okay, one thing that we can do is we can start taking away his cover and shred him. That worked very well. This here is probably the best potential flanking position, high ground and flanking, plus full cover. 
Looks like a genius position. Not sure why exactly he had only taken uh, three points of damage. All right, first of all, reload. We're moving all the way to the other side so that we can drop down on him next turn. Moving into full cover. Let's continue with the Shock Trooper. Good, moving up to here. So we can help with the Chose next turn. Moving up to here so that we can actually hit him next turn. And since the Chosen is immune to melee attacks, I'm not even going to try it. Instead, we're dealing with a Shock Trooper. So oh, wow. That's a lot of damage. How to deal with the dazed condition. Looks like I've got another captive all lined up for the taking. You're making this too easy on me. Oh, we're going to see about uh, that. Not sure if we're making it too easy on you. Time for a revive. Great. And there's the burning. Lovely. They're not immune to it. Fortunately, we can't reload and hit him. Let's get rid of the shock trooper. Yeah, I think we're just going to end it. Moving down. The mech has over uh, charge ready or overdrive ready. Nice, critical 15. Yeah, that was pretty nasty. You've surprised me once again, Commander. Maybe 
I need to reconsider my tactics. We showed the chosen that the resistance is here to stay, Commander. We showed the chosen who is boss, that's for sure. Alright, I think overall the roast was a misplay, the rest was pretty much a, uh, going according to plan. We took fire or one shot on our sniper. Yeah, one can argue that that might not have been necessary. I don't know. Could have probably played that more defensively. On the other hand, the shock trooper had a pretty decent position there, so I'm not sure what else to, uh, I should have done. We got a lot of turns left here, so we could have gone slower. I don't think that it would have changed much because the real threat was uh, the Chosen. We got ourselves a uh, scientist and no one died, so that's the important piece. I think overall it was an okay mission. Could have done better, but still, it was okay. And look at that, we even got two promotions. So, I will promise to do better with uh, row stability. I actually thought about... This character class goes pretty well together with our Overwatch-based uh, um, specialist because we can put the overwatch base specialist onto overwatch first um, with guardian and sentinel has multiple overwatches and even if you're going into kind of uh, kill zone um, you would have multiple overwatches and then you can roast and force multiple enemies to move uh, hence not only taking the fire damage but also triggering a lot of overwatches so i can see how that uh, how that would work out and I like the disorientation and panicking so just more status effects with uh, the flamer not sure if we're overwatching a lot but why not I mean covering fire is a good ability as for our sniper, we got death from above. Um, let's use center mass. She has flashbang and smoker. Both are pretty good um, abilities. So let's start with uh, smoker and when she has enough ability points, we're giving her flashbang. And there is some bonding going on, but the, the actual bond Compatibility of those is pretty low. Loot got some conditioning. That's good. The Alarium Core is worth 20. Advanced Expanded Magazine is really good. And probably the highlight is uh, the Scientist making it uh, over all eight scientists, which means we got a spare scientist finally. And we wanted to field a mission. That was the last thing that I remember. We got a spare scientist finally for our for our intel gathering. One here, one here. And yep, there we go. Good. 
Now, all of the intel gathering, um, all of the intel gathering regions have a scientist in them. And here we do have Operation Demon Fall, which is a smash and grab that we can field. Let me do that real quick. Good, we couldn't fully reach 100%. So, uh, it's a difficult decision. I mean, we're close. We could get rid of some of the equipment, I suppose. Or we're just accepting that there's another pack, which isn't the end of the world. So I guess we're going we're going with that setup here. All right, modified it and tweaked it a little bit, but uh, generally we're sticking with 95%. Uh, long um, expiration time mission, which is perfect for rookies, I think. Smash and grab, I mean, it's pretty likely that we'll get at least one crate. Whatever else we can kill to get some loot is perfectly fine. Not a big threat in my perspective. So we got uh, as a frontline a shinobi and an assault. Got cover removal from our technician. Uh, got a gunner uh, for, in this case, really cover fire. Um, a damage dealer mech and a support uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Overdrive. All right. Good, let's heal faster. It's one option. We don't have enough intel, elsewise I would definitely like to make contact. Probably the next contact should be down to here so that we can attack the alien base in East Asia. So intel gathering is the name of the game. Might as well fly down here and gather some intel. Cool. Outrider got her next ability. Who else should be should be a leader? I mean, certainly the shinobis are a good starting point. So might as well put them into leadership training. Nice, we got our skull check, so that would at least give us the option if if we were to use it to reduce the avatar project if needed. And I think something has just hit 100%. Yep, destroy the alien relay over here. Yeah, we, we can directly launch it. No further need to, to continue waiting. 24 Intel and an Intel package. That's exactly what we would like to see. All we need to do is destroying an alien relay. 729 is a low baseline. So yeah, that's going to happen in our next mission uh, for today. We're done. It was not the most crucial mission ever, but it was still a nice little uh, knock with the aliens. Uh, if you like what you've seen, consider liking and leaving a comment down below. That always helps the channel. And uh, if you want, we see each other in the next episode. See you later. Bye bye.